In fact, until about 500 years ago, most paintings were on wooden panels. But the adoption of canvas about 500 years ago solved some problems that people were having at that time. For one thing, very large paintings on wooden panels were very heavy and clumsy to move around. But they became very light when they were done on canvas. For another thing, in places like Venice, which was an art center, and where they paved the streets with water for some reason, the moisture in the air was attacking these wooden panels and causing them to swell and split and rot. And those problems were solved by the adoption of canvas. And what would Hollywood do if paintings weren't painted on canvas? Think of all the plots that require paintings to be cut out of their frames and rolled up and carried away, and that couldn't be done with wooden panels. Mrs. Travers gave me to understand that you were intending to steal a painting, sir. You just cut it out of the frame with a good sharp knife. Well, I haven't got a good sharp knife. Yes, you have. Now, you see, this just wouldn't be possible with anything except canvas. Oil paint burns nice, isn't it? I've never burned a painting, but I've seen a few good candidates for it. Anyway, I said earlier that canvas is not the very best thing to paint on, and yet it's still very good. I've seen paintings on canvas that were five centuries old, and they looked brand new because they'd been cleaned and well cared for. Canvas's main drawback is that it's flexible, being cloth, and oil paint is not flexible. But if you stretch it correctly, it can last that long, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. And making your own canvas has distinct advantages. You save time, you save a lot of money, and you can make canvases in sizes that you cannot buy commercially. For example, I like to reproduce historic paintings in exactly the same dimensions as the original whenever I can, or at least in the same proportions if they're too big. And where would I have bought a canvas of these dimensions to reproduce Sargent's Madame X? Well, the answer is I never could have found a commercially made tall, narrow canvas of exactly these dimensions, especially one with oil-primed linen on it. So I had to make my own. And it wasn't hard at all, and that's what I'm going to show you. But I have to tell you that making a video on canvas stretching had to be one of the duller things I've done in my life. So. To relieve the monotony a little bit, I had some fun with it here and there, and I hope you don't hold it against me, and maybe you'll find it fun too. Now in a nutshell, to make a canvas panel to paint on, you assemble a wooden frame, stretch canvas over that frame, and then hold the canvas in place with staples or tacks around the edges. You can jump straight to part four and watch it done, or you can work your way up to part four at a more leisurely pace. Here's how this video is organized. First we have my history of painting and the use of canvas to paint on. And if you've been watching from the beginning, you've already seen that, so congratulations, you got through it. There's four more parts to go. The first one is a discussion of the canvas stretching tools. After that, we'll talk about canvas itself. Then we'll build a stretcher frame. And finally, we'll stretch and staple the canvas to that frame. So we'll start with the tools. First of all, right at the start, for legal reasons, I have to tell you that this video is for your information only. If you decide to imitate me in some of these things I'm going to show you and take on a canvas stretching project, you do it at your own risk. Now, I've stretched canvases for years, and I haven't hurt myself yet, knocking on wood, but we all know some people who just shouldn't mess with tools. They can hurt themselves with any sort of a tool. Those kind of people. Now those guys are in the movies, but we all know people like that in real life. I know a few, and you probably do too. And if you are one of those people, for gosh sakes, don't try to do anything with tools. Just use this video for your own information to see how canvas stretching is done, and have somebody else stretch your canvases for you. Or buy them ready-made. As I said before, 
If you decide to do this and imitate me, you do it at your own risk. And by the way, those little bits of movies are from some of my favorite comedy movies, and I've identified them for you in the credits at the end of this video so that you can rent or buy them for yourself. They're good for a lot of laughs. By the way, nowhere in this video have I endorsed any particular tool or product because I want to keep this video free from commercialism and also because no company has yet bribed me or rather I have not yet seen any particular product that I'm so impressed with that I want to endorse it. But if you're interested in what brands of tools I personally prefer, go to my website and I'll set aside a page where I list my personal preferences in tools which may change from time to time. Now for people who are acquainted with basic hand tools and have a little experience with them, you probably won't find canvas stretching very difficult at all. In fact, you may have most of the tools around the house already. Safety equipment first. Gloves and goggles. Canvas stretching pliers. Some kind of a stapler. Or if you're not going to staple, Tacks and a tack hammer. A metal ruler or yardstick. Scissors and a pencil for drawing on your canvas and cutting it out. A soft hammer for tapping your stretcher frames into alignment. I would add an ordinary hammer to tap down the staples that don't go in all the way. You'll want a tape measure, a square for the initial squaring up of your stretcher frames, a file for smoothing down any sharp corners they may have, or you could use sandpaper for that if you don't have a file. Various kinds of pliers are useful for pulling staples and tacks back out when you want to get them back out, or if they've gone in so deeply that the pliers can't grip them, a, a small flat bladed screwdriver will allow you to dig under the tacks or staples to get them up. So there's a basic list of the tools. Now I'll show you how to use them. And you need to know that there are some choices to make. For example, there are different kinds of staplers you can use. Or you can use tacks and a hammer. And there are different kinds of canvas stretching pliers. So we're going to do some more talking about the tools. But if you're getting bored with tool talk, go back to the main menu of this DVD and you can jump straight to the canvas stretching if that's what you want. Although I don't see how anybody could get bored talking about tools because it's such a fascinating subject, isn't it? Right.